welcome to Jasmine Tea TV. I am Jasmine T. I hope everyone had a happy holiday and a very Merry Christmas. I just wrapped up my Christmas holidays in Poland and I thought it would be pretty cool to share some interesting facts that I learned about Christmas traditions here in Poland. Now, for those of you who have watched previous videos and heard me say that I was going home for Christmas, that I was going to South Carolina and I would not miss another Christmas with my family, I said that, okay? I definitely said that. I even bought a plane ticket. But long story short, the residency process here in Poland struck again and I had to stay home. So I will definitely do an update video on that. I think it's important to give you guys all the details, especially for anyone who is considering moving to Poland. It's really important that you understand what you're getting into uh, with this residency process, okay? But we'll get into that another time. We're going to focus on happy thoughts and new experiences, okay? And not really dwell on this very depressing subject. Okay, so let's just jump right on in. I'm going to share five fun facts about Christmas traditions in Poland. Let's just dive right on in with fun fact number one, and that is Christmas holidays in Poland is basically a three-day event, okay? The 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. Now, the 24th is the most important out of all these days, even though on the 24th, shops are open and people have to go to work. Um, but on this day is the Polish Vigilia, and that is your traditional Christmas Eve supper. And this year, I got to attend my first Polish Vigilia. I celebrated with my boyfriend's family, and I just learned so many things about Polish traditions that I just had to tell y'all, okay? So number two, fun fact number two, let's basically break down what a Polish Vigilia even looks like because it's so different than Christmas dinner with my family. So first off, the dinner traditionally consists of 12 dishes. I've heard different reasons for why there may be 12 dishes. The first thing I heard was that 12 dishes basically represent good luck for the next 12 months. Or the 12 dishes could have symbolized Jesus' 12 disciples. So I guess it depends on whose house you go to. It might have different meanings, okay? So you have these 12 dishes, and out of all these dishes, there's no meat. So even the pierogi, uh, the dumplings will have like cabbage and mushrooms. So the only thing that's really served is fish. Usually you'll find carp or herring at a traditional Polish vigilia, okay? So you have these 12 dishes, you have your carp, you have your herring, and also if you notice this beautiful tablecloth, if you look under this tablecloth, you will find hay. And this hay is to serve as a reminder that Jesus was born in a manger. So throughout this supper, there are just so many little things, so many little symbols. One thing I thought was really cool is that everyone's sitting at the table, but there's an empty place setting. So if you're expecting 14 people to your vigilia, then you would actually set a place for 15. And this extra seat is, I've heard different meanings for this, and I'm pretty sure someone will correct me in the comments below but I heard that the empty place setting represents a place for the Lord. And I also heard that this empty place setting is for a lost stranger or a lost wanderer who needs a meal on this holiday. So yeah, we don't do anything like that <laughs> where I'm from, all the seats are taken. So I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool. So that's basically the setup of the dinner. But one thing I noticed is that even the pace of the dinner was different than what I was used to. Each dish, was it really eaten together? So for example, we didn't have full dinner plates. It was more like little saucers. And so the first course or the first dish was one dumpling. And so everyone ate their dumpling. I mean, it was huge. Everyone had their dumpling. We ate it and we finished. And then someone brought out pieces of carp and everyone got one piece of carp. That's how we kind of like progressed through the 12 dishes, just individually which is so different, okay, so different than back home. For example, when it's time to fix food in my aunt's house, you get your plate, a big plate, okay, and you are putting on your fried turkey, your ham, your ribs, your collard greens, your butter beans, your corn, your cornbread. Okay, so you're putting all of that on your plate at the same time and no one is doing this whole, okay, one at a time, I'm done. 
one at a time, are we done <laughs> type situation. Okay, you get a plate, you park it somewhere and you just you just go to town, okay? So this was very different and that's basically what a Polish Bagilia looks like, all right? Fun fact number three, let's go into something called Posterica. What in the world is Posterica? Okay, and this is, uh, it translates into shepherd's mass, if I'm not mistaken, but it's basically a mass uh, observed by Roman Catholics. So some people will have their Christmas Eve supper and then they will go to church at midnight or be in church at midnight. Others will celebrate Pasterka, but in a different way, maybe at a bar or a house party with family and friends. But just know that at midnight, another type of celebration starts um, after the Vigilia. So you have this long dinner that's kind of like building up for the Pasterka celebration. And fun fact number four, and we're actually going to reverse a bit. I thought this was so intimate <laughs> and like really bringing people together. Um, and I wish that we kind of did something like this in my family, but it is called the sharing of the opuatic. And this happens before you even sit down to have your supper. And an opuatic is basically this thin wafer, similar to what you would use for communion. So you go around with your wafer to each person in the room and you wish them peace and prosperity and you break off a piece of their wafer, they break off a piece of yours and you eat it. And that's basically it. And you go to the next person. But I thought, but what I thought was really cute is it wasn't something just for the adults. Even the children participated. So you're like bending down to break the little child's opuatek and you're wishing them well, they're wishing you well. So I thought that was, I thought that was pretty cute. <laughs> Okay, and the last fun fact, fun fact number five, um, it wouldn't be Polish Christmas traditions if there wasn't drinking involved. So, for example, if you go to, if you come to my house in South Carolina for our Christmas dinner and we ask you what you want to drink, we're basically going to offer you, offer you sweet tea, lemonade, or water, okay? That's, that's what we consume <laughs> with our Christmas dinner. Um, in Poland, okay, so at the Polish Vigilia, I was offered brandy or vodka. And I'm not a heavy drinker. I don't really like shots either. I like sweet drinks, I like mixed drinks. But you had to have some alcohol because the number of times, uh, the amount of toast that go on during the supper is, like, I, I lost count, okay? I pretty much lost count. And like you just, so you're constantly drinking between these little dishes. At one point, I didn't want to be tipsy in the people's house. <laughs> so I thought that I could, you know, just kind of be slick and go to, go to Pepsi only, no vodka or anything like that. And when it came time for the next toast, someone noticed that I only had Pepsi and they said, oh, does Jasmine not have alcohol? Why doesn't she have alcohol? and I was told that I needed to have alcohol. So yeah, before we continued the toast, I had to get alcohol and I had to drink. If you're lightweight or if you don't like drinking, it's going to be hard to be prepared because it's strong stuff. So for example, we went to my boyfriend's father's house and he pulled out something called Suovica. I'm doing off of memory, but here's the bottle, Suovica. And when you pull out this bottle and then you do this. Ready? Yes. Oh, okay. It burns. Polish, yes. yeah. Polish, oh, okay. Zobacz. That shows how strong it Zobacz. is. Please. And we have to drink this? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh. Blow it out, yeah? Yes. Yeah, blow it out. <laughs> oh. Oh, my dear. You are setting the alcohol on fire to tell me how strong it is and then want me to drink it. That's not something. I don't want that. I don't want that strong of alcohol. But. Yeah, in Poland, um, you will drink. You will have to drink. It is polite to drink. So yeah, those are the fun facts that I learned this Christmas. If you are from Poland and I missed any traditions, please drop them in the comment section below. If you're not from Poland and you have unique Christmas traditions where you're from, be sure to drop those in the comment section as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at jasminet underscore TV. 
and I will see you guys next time.